What's up, LEGO Club members? I'm Scott, and welcome to the LEGO Club Show. In today's episode, we're going to Northwest BrickCon, a LEGO fan fest in Seattle, Washington, to talk with some real brick addicts and find out what their wild imaginations have built. Plus, we've got cool creations with our friend Flappy, some awesome animations, and more. So let's hit the bricks. Ever wish you could build Lego creations for a living? Well, so did Dan Parker, a Lego certified professional who made a career out of his creations. We tracked him down in Washington to find out what life is like as a professional Lego model builder. Welcome to the Washington studio of LEGO certified professional Dan Parker. Let's have a look. Hey Dan, how you doing? Hey Scott, welcome, come on in. Good to see you. How are you? Show us around the studio. Well, this is our production studio for working on all kinds of cool LEGO projects. We've got all of our brick arranged on walls. We've got workbenches and just a cool, it's a great area for working on LEGO projects. How did you get started building LEGO models? Well, I played a LEGO as a kid and I, it was really cool back then. And it was one of several things that I just enjoyed constructing things out of. So after I was 10 years old and actually got rid of my Lego, gave it to my younger brother, didn't touch Lego for a long time. And then I kind of rediscovered it when I was 30 years old. And at that point, it was really cool because I had a lot more life behind me and I could just see doing all kinds of cool things with Lego. How did it come back into your life? I was buying it for family, for other members, for nephews, and I had been involved in architecture and engineering and things like that, and I picked it up and I said, wow, I can use Lego to do some really cool things based on my experiences. And I just started doing all kinds of cool things with it, building and creating things that I, you know, from my life. So Dan, when somebody calls you up and says, can you build me something, mm -hmm. how do you get started? <laughs> how do we get started on a project? Well. Uh, projects vary a lot, but in general what I want to do is I want to find out really what that client is looking for. What do they want us to build for them? So we, we sit down, we talk, and we look at things like, you know, who's the model going to be used for? Is it a gift? Is it for a big show? Uh, do they just want it for their own personal enjoyment? Can you show us one that you're working on right yeah. now? Yeah, well this is a dollhouse that we're building for a client. Uh, it's not for a little girl or anything, but I think she's, she's a little girl at heart. <laughs> And uh, this is going to be based on their family home. Well, Dan, that's great. And is there anything else that you're working on now? Yeah, as a matter of fact, we are, Scott. Uh, this is a conceptual model for an actual trade show booth. And we started, we built the model in Lego, and the client thought that was pretty interesting. We've got the science fiction area of the booth. Uh, we've got the undersea area. Uh, over here is my town. Uh, on the back side, which is kind of a nice horizon or, or backscape for the town, is the cityscape. Uh, we've got a forest area over here, and it wouldn't be cool if it was like Robin Hood or the forestmen running around and that, knights and dragons and all that. And then over here in this area, well, and actually knights, uh, we've got a castle area. So we've kind of got all those, those six areas integrated into one model. We're using elements here in kind of different ways than what you might expect. Uh, when you work in different sizes, you're using Lego in different ways. For example, this is a minifigure head, and it is in a green color, so when we use it on a brown cylinder, it becomes a Lego tree. This is a grill, and you might use this on a spaceship for a vent, or a car for a bumper, but where you, when you're using it in micro scale, it becomes the roof of a building, it gives a really nice roof texture. Here again, this is a clip, and you might use this clip on a train to hold an air horn. But when you're using it on a castle in micro scale, 
it becomes the, the crenellated or the battlement, if you will. And Dan, do you have any tips for the Lego builders out there? I do, Scott. One of them is organization of elements. For us, that is very important because we have at any one time probably two million elements on hand. So in this area here, you see we've got roof bricks, we've got all of our plate, some of the premium colors that we always want to make sure we have plenty on hand for projects, to, at least to start out with. And over here we get into actually brick type elements, kind of transparent colors. We've got tile, we've got other earth tones of brick, we get into primary colors. And then after all the brick, we've got all the detail elements. What if you had all of the time in the world and all of the brick in the world? What would you build? Wow. That's a great question. Scott, I would love to build a 15-foot diameter Death Star model. <laughs> I think that would be really cool. But better than that, I would like to make it a group project. And I'd like to make it where we can include kids from the community to help us build that. So who knows? Look out. <laughs> that will be fun. <laughs> Stay tuned to legoclub.com for more from this super awesome episode of the Lego Club Show.